So this is Steel Rats, brought to us by the makers of Cow the Kangaroo. Get that keyboard out of here. We're not using a keyboard. This is a controller only zone. <laughs> so this is a motorcycle game, I guess. Uh, it, it'll be easier to describe once we see some gameplay. Anyway, I'm joined as always by PD Precious Roy. Good evening. And by the man who uh, recommended this game to me, Salted Grump. Yeah, how you doing, guys? Well, I'm sure you're ready to see some terrible voice acting and awkward stilted motorcycle physics. Well, that'll be <laughs> half the fun, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've been looking forward to it. Also, I hope you like this song, because you'll be hearing it a lot. Honestly, it's not bad. This is sort of setting up our framing device. Okay. So, tell us, how did this all begin? Uh, just to set your expectations properly, Veronica has by far the best voice acting in the game. And, and so little of it. Well, she, she does have a, a bit of narration later on, but that won't be in this video, I don't think. Ah, I see there's dangerous Tesla toasters on the prowl. Yep. I'm already getting the Art Deco film noir vibe. I like it. Yeah, according to the developers, this was originally supposed to be entirely black and white, but they ditched that when it interfered with the gameplay. I mean, they also said that it's hey, set gang. somewhere in the 1940s. You home? So, unfortunately, this is our protagonist. Uh, his name is Toshiro, or Toshi for short. If I remember correctly, doesn't this game, isn't this game set in Michigan? Yes, it is set in the fictional city of Coastal City in Michigan, which I believe is, uh, is somewhere near Lake Huron. Saginaw Bay, I think. So, so north-ish lower peninsula. Yeah. It's an interesting choice for a backdrop. I mean, it's the armpit of Detroit. <laughs> Valid. Speaking of interesting choices, this game tries to take what the motorcycle gameplay of, like, Trials and turn it into a platformer. With combat later on. Like, there's a dedicated jump button and everything. Got credit where credit is due, at least they're willing to try. Yeah. Wee. Yeah, so you can control uh, your your vertical turning and midair, just like in Trials, and you can also do spins. I noticed you actually got 100 points for that backflip, too. Yes. Uh, you might want to pay attention to the top right corner, because that's actually a score multiplier. Uh, you'll, we will be combining tricks along with combat. That is a secret. I mean, it wasn't very secret, was it? Later ones are pretty ridiculous. But uh, they are the only collectibles that have any sort of lore attached to them. And they're also the only piece of collectibles in this game that don't have achievements tied to them. Which means that every guide I looked up did not include the location of the secrets. The frustrated uh, screaming you hear is real. Yes, <laughs> it is very real. Mess to steal rats. Steal rats assemble. <laughs> yeah, in case it wasn't obvious, Steel Rats is the name of this motorcycle club. Uh, thankfully, Toshi is not the president of the club. Yes, Avengers to Toshi. <laughs> Considering how much smoke that bike is putting out, I'm surprised it's even functional. I'm surprised Toshi isn't dying of carbon monoxide poisoning in the five seconds he's in there. It's 1940. We didn't worry about carbon monoxide back then. It was a different time. So this is not going to be a 100% run. However, I will be getting as many of the secrets as I can find, as well as all of the upgrades and costumes. Uh, the secondary objectives you saw there are not uh, mandatory. They just give you... Uh, point bonuses and and more junk, which is the XP system, and is separate from the score system. You'll want to keep that in mind. 
Oh, you can customize the bike, too. Yeah, the bike and the costume, and you can mix and match at all sorts of weird combinations. I mean, points for creativity. At least they start with an absolutely hilarious-looking pompadour on the guy. Yeah, and it only gets better from there. That is what I imagine a 1940s Japanese kid would think a 1940s greaser haircut from America would look like. <laughs> Something out of JoJo. <laughs> thing is, is that actually there is a massive subculture in Japan regarding uh, biker clubs and extreme pompadours. The most extreme of them can easily get up to two feet in length. Also, the loading tip gave away a gameplay mechanic later, so I had to censor it. <laughs> Aw, that's okay. Yeah, I remember those. They were like the Elvis impersonators in Yakuza. Was that that kind of group? Uh, yeah, I think the uh, official term for them is something like uh, Bokuzo or something like that. It's something I can't pronounce, so don't mind me. So we also have these gears, uh, which you activate by revving the engine. It reminds me a little bit of the uh, bomb locks in Metroid Prime, actually, but at least Metroid Prime has uh, playability. And here's the <laughs> other major mechanic of this game, oh the wheel saw. It's basically this game's version of the chainsaw bayonet from Gears of War. Uh, the front wheel of everyone's motorcycle is also a buzz saw, and it can cut through most metal. And in fact, you'll need to do so uh, in order to collect junk uh, to buy upgrades. Ah, so junk is both an experience system as well as... Well, that's the thing. The junk is at your score. And if you look at this, the, okay, so when you have those numbers appearing, the plus, I think, refers to your score, while the number underneath it refers to the junk. At least I think that's what it is. Aha. Uh -huh. This game is not very good at user experience. Hey, that's a Sherman tank. <laughs> yes, it is. It's also one of the few things that the wheel saw can't cut. For obvious reason, it's 30 tons. Yeah, I mean, it can cut right through barbed wire and concrete barriers, but nope. No Sherman tanks. I'm, I'm beginning to wonder about why there's a Sherman tank on the highway broken down in Michigan. And it's not winter, but I mean... Well, I think the set piece coming up may have something to do with that. So, yeah, the wheel saw can also give you a speed boost, which you'll need in this little set piece here. What the... Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a huge robot chasing us, uh, along with a, uh, a laser ray. I was trying to get one of the secondary objectives there to get some extra junk, which is the, a double spin and one jump. Uh, and that ended up making this chase sequence very tense. To be fair, a bit of tense never hurt yet, did it? Not with these controls. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> Looks like you're having a fun party, kid. Oh, so glad I found you, boss. And now I have to ask, why was there a giant robot chasing him? Because of America? <laughs> it's one of the few things in this story that actually makes sense uh, later on. So this is our second main character, James Jones. He is the president of the Steel Rats MC. And uh, he actually has his own unique gameplay quirks when you're playing as him. Uh, there will be four major playable characters eventually. And uh, James and Toshi also have their own upgrade trees. Right now, we're just going to get an extra energy boost uh, for Toshi. Uh, it takes energy to use the wheel saw. That's the, the first thing. It'll become more complicated later. Now, can you switch characters, any mission, play any character? Uh, you actually swap between them on the fly. Oh. Which is something that'll be introduced to the very next level. Well, gotta give credit for that mustache on James, because that is a stylish mustache. Oh yeah, James probably has the most variation. Also, this is what the lore looks like. James Jones. His accent tells me that he hails from Seattle, but he doesn't... Uh, citation needed on that one. From what I gather, James rode with several biker gangs before coming to Coastal. What brought him here, we may never know. It's possible that James came to Michigan and Coastal to run away from some dark past he left out west. He has a good heart. The other rats look up to him, and he looks out for them. Not feared, but respected by all. Yeah, so there's one piece of lore for every level. 
and I will do my best to collect as many as I can. I do, if I absolutely run out of ideas, uh, I do have a backup 100% save file that I can use, but hopefully I don't have to resort to that. You probably will have to, because of course the game hates you. Well, so far I've managed to find every secret. So this is where uh, the game's switching mechanics. You have to hold in the right stick to bring up this menu to switch characters, or you can click the right stick to swap them on the fly. Ugh. Crazy story, we'll have to wait. We need to find the rest of the gang. Last time I checked, Randall's fooling around near the old mine. That wacko. I, I love this voice acting. <laughs> I have to ask, did they not? Whoa. Good job. <laughs> you need at least one full energy block in order to be able to dash. And when I did it the second time, uh, well, things didn't go well. Ow. The ow. <laughs> <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, this, this voice acting is just, it's perfect. That wouldn't change a thing. And oh, God, yeah. This, these physics are something else, man. It's very trials. It's, the thing oh, is. Oh, yeah. It's trials, but there are attempts to make quality of life features that, ironically enough, make it more difficult to control. So it's trials when you're playing with the super with the uh, shopping cart. Yeah, it's trials with KBM is kind of the feel. Look at that! Whoa! Okay, this thing here. That's way above my pay grade. Be careful, they might bite. Yeah, this is also a character action game somehow. Uh, combat is okay, I guess. Uh, it can get pretty frustrating though. Which is to be expected in a character action game. You've never seen anything like that? That's way more advanced. I did not notice that rubber ducky on the side. Until just now. See, there it is. Yeah, I just saw it. So that little robot that uh, Toshi picked up, that is the junk pet. That's actually his main method of attack, which we'll be seeing a bit later. Right, you mentioned in Discord that each character has their uh, own unique uh, special attack or whatnot. Yes, they do. I don't think I introduce it in, in this level, but there are uh, doors that uh, they're like enemy door, enemy red doors of Devil May Cry. You have to clear out all the enemies. Yeah, I saw that. It kind of makes sense for the obvious reason of make you have to suffer through the fighting system. There's also vertical driving. <laughs> you drive along these pipes and it restore. It also restores your energy. Uh, you're basically glued to the pipes. So there's no real danger of falling off, at least in the first couple levels. Uh, this level's secret is off to the left here. We have to defeat all the enemies, and that opens this door. And the secret is a bit behind that. I'm having flashbacks to the episode with hundreds of Tom servos. Nice. Which, uh, which MST3K episode was that? I cannot remember which experiment it them. was, but they... <laughs> <laughs> they they had a boatload of, of mock-up Tom servos, uh in the, in the, uh, studio. Energy boost, yeah! I don't know why, just the mouth on these things, it reminded me of Tom Servo. Yeah, I should probably mention now, James is the only, uh, character, oh, oh, also, I think I was... Good shot. Yeah, I, bus. <laughs> I, I think I was paying attention to something else. Uh, don't, don't text and drive, kids. Nice! So there's actually a mini set piece here, which is timed correctly if you don't go for the secret. Because there are there are trains that go across the tracks there. And if you're actually playing the level normally, it'll be timed so that you just miss the train. I mean, aesthetically interesting, but they really should have scripted it so it goes when you head that direction so you can actually get the secret and not have to uh, miss that. Yeah, the script trigger gets hit way too early. And uh, I guess I should also point out, you have to be using the wheel saw for the most part in order to defeat these enemies here. Randall, come in, Randall. 
is just static. <laughs> that kid is a real trouble magnet. This game also has trouble when it comes to timing its dialogue. Like, I had to slow down to make sure you could actually hear it uninterrupted. Did I just hear that kid go yippee? Yeah, that's Toshi. Anyway, this is one of the few places where I could consistently get stuck in the geometry. If you crash in that exact spot, you'll respawn it in the middle of this ramp. <laughs> And you'll, you'll get stuck. There, there's, uh, without some real physics shenanigans, the only way to get out of this is to restart the level. Congratulations, you fucked up. <laughs> Does it count as fucking up if I did it on purpose? Yeah, it's just the scale of the fuck up. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I guess it's also worth noting, uh, this game works on a lane system, kind of similar to Excitebike. Except it's they're not strict lanes. There's still limited 3D movement in between the lanes, which causes a lot of trouble. You also complained on Discord about how because the lanes aren't strict, there's shenanigans and fuckery afoot because you can end up with, well, mayhem going on. Oh, yeah, we're going to see plenty of that in this LP. Don't worry. Uh, that, I would tear my hair out if I also had to do the optional objectives. Thank God I'm not touching those. You don't, <laughs> you don't need them Yet. for the upgrades anyway. <laughs> Only for one trophy. I guess it's worth pointing out. Uh, all of the trophies, except for the very first one, have an under 10% completion rate. I wonder why. Wait, no I don't. The hell? It's the Curse of Steel Rats. <laughs> This is awesome! So that is the junk pet. It is Toshi's primary attack. <laughs> As you can see, the range is, is pretty shitty, but uh, don't worry about that. It's, uh, I also noticed the junk pet clipping through the wall. Yeah. Huh? This what now? Mobile radio unit. Mark IV? They have extremely wide bandwidth. Maybe we could use it to contact Randall. All right, get on it. I also apologize for the bad frame rate. This, I, my computer's not great, and this is not a well-programmed Unreal Legend 4 game. So some of the time I can get to 60 frames per second. I barely notice the dips, honestly. I mean, just assume it's staying at 45 frames per second, and you'll be fine. Yeah. And just in case you think we're done with the story segment, right after that is an audio log radio broadcast, which, which is not subtitled, so I subtitled it for you. City Police has just confirmed that Eastern Warrens Gate District has been attacked by unknown forces. I repeat, Coastal City has been attacked by unknown forces. The town hall is urging citizens to stay in their homes next to the radio set. If you know one of your immediate neighbors who might not receive this message, try to inform them about the situation. But please, only do so if it seems safe. This message will repeat. It's probably the Germans. So the uh, the secret for this level is above the, the room where the switch is. Uh, and you have to sort of jump at the edge of the ramp and then boost. It's very awkward. It took quite a few attempts for me to be able to get this. Well, congratulations, you did get it. And that message continues to repeat the whole time. I mean, it did say it would. Yeah, it warned us. Since I'm not in the right lane, I'm not able to uh, ride up the tree there. Hey guys, I think Coastal City has been attacked by unknown forces. Really, what makes you think that? Well, there might be this guy telling us that Coastal City has been attacked by unknown forces. Perhaps we should stay in our homes next to the radio set and only inform our neighbors if it seems safe. There will be an explanation eventually for why these uh, robots are attacking us. 
the answer, of course, is almost always going to be sillier than you think it is. Oh, definitely. Uh, you might notice that uh, the range on the junk pet is pretty shitty. That's actually just because of the standard range. Well, we can upgrade that later. And we also have lane ledges, a mechanic that's not really used that much, at least at the early stages. So now we're going to introduce the primary attack for James, which is just a big heavy melee attack uh, with a, a short range. It's basically the equivalent of a shotgun. He basically bounces the front wheel off the ground and creates a fart wave. <laughs> and of course that causes physics problems later when you try to do it in midair. Oh, okay. a perfect double backflip. Travis Pastrana would be proud. Wee! And as you can see, the in the top right there, the score multiplier is currently at 5x. I've been keeping it at that level mainly by doing tricks on the way to the next fight. And then you immediately got it tanked to 4x. Yeah, because I I didn't do much. It's it's a a, a pale imitation of the style system from Devil May Cry. And also the best trick I've found for uh, maintaining speed and momentum is just to switch characters when you run out of energy. If this goon wants to fight, then let's see how he likes our wheel saws. Let's get some. This is our first heavy enemy, the Gunner Goon. Thankfully, we also have a spin move that can reflect projectiles back at him. And then finishing it up with the wheel saw for good measure. Well, I have to admit, I'm hoping that the controls aren't too crap. Well, for now, they're not. The level design is actually pretty... It's decent for the most part, it's occasionally good, but it's the, the controls are fighting with the level design, and usually the level design wins. We can also use that spin attack to uh, switch lanes quickly. And there are guns. This is... It, the game calls it a revolver, but really it just acts like a regular video game semi-automatic pistol. I mean, it's sure doing a good job of uh, failing at the basic premises of firearm. Yeah, the, the lock-on is pretty bad. And there's one weapon later on where I'm pretty sure the lock-on is artificially made worse as a form of difficulty. So that's it. That's the last level uh, in this update. But before we finish things, uh, I thought I would uh, have a little joke for Roy here. Oh, no. Yeah, the, the video files are stored entirely as MP4s, so it's very easy to swap things out. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> there he stares into my soul. <laughs> I knew you'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that got me. It was worth a good hearty chuckle, but I just didn't. So, uh, what do you guys think of Steel Rats so far? I mean, honestly. It might have had promise if it wasn't so janky. Uh, you might want to think that uh, think that through again once we get to some of the later levels. Uh, yeah, I said might have had yeah. promise. <laughs> I enough. think I think ambitious is the nicest word I can use for what I saw there. Um, maybe lacking in polish a bit right out the gate, but optimistic. Optimistic. I I remain optimistic. I like to try to see. The, the polish on the turd, you know, um, before we get down well, to the turd. I mean, uh, let's be fair. The Mythbusters already proved you can actually polish a turd, so. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so, it I mean. It just has to be compressed flat and turned into a paper first. <laughs> there, there might be something here, you know, is this, this all I'm saying, and I'm willing to stay open to the possibility of it not being a completely rank knockoff of Trials. Uh, although it actually is worth pointing out that Tate Multimedia had already made a Trials knockoff back in 2013 called Urban Trial Freestyle, uh, which was not very well received. I wonder why. 
they they didn't just port the engine to this game, did they? They probably did. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it, it is kind of a shame that, you know, Tate were clearly, they were clearly trying to hype this game up and make it their next franchise. And then the game bombed. So now they've gone back to cow the kangaroo for a, uh, a, a revival that's coming to PC later this year. I still don't know what the original was, so. I don't think any of us know what it was. <laughs> it was one of many, uh, cost, uh, animal themed, co- uh, uh, animal themed mascot platformers from the 2000s. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. So basically, the cheap knockoff version of Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Yeah. Don't don't insult cow like that. Come on. Okay. The cheaper <laughs> knockoff. <laughs> okay. So it was it was basically the cheap knockoff of Bubsy 3D. Ouch. Oof. Yeah. Ouch. Man, Roy, Roy laying down the uh, the hard facts there. <laughs> 